Welcome to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics in our outstanding studios as always. And we're going to talk injuries for the Cincinnati Bengals a little bit. You know, some some injuries uh, are not as significant as others. And I'm not saying that uh, guys aren't playing hurt like a T. Higgins with that ankle injury. It's not totally prohibiting him from giving 100%. And he's out there working. And I think he's going to be able to play in this football game uh, as well just like he was able to play in the New Orleans Saints game. I think he's going to make the dance for the Falcons. Hayden Hurst, nursing a little bit of a, a groin issue. I think he'll he'll make the dance as well. Um, let's get into some of the other injuries, though, that uh, took place during the course of this football game and others that took place earlier in the season. Let's hit DJ Reader first. Uh, DJ Reader is on injury reserve at this point in time. Uh, he's able to do a lot of movement uh, straight ahead but still trying to work through side-to-side -side lateral movement things. Uh, not ready yet, but hopefully ready sooner than later because having DJ Reader unavailable in defending that run, whenever DJ Reader doesn't play, it seems like teams are able to run the football a little bit more successfully. This guy is a force controlling the center right at the point of attack in the line of scrimmage right over the football. DJ Reader is missed. There's no doubt. The guy that was playing well in his place, though, Josh Tupo, he goes down with a calf injury as well in the football game. When I saw him limping off the game down there, uh, off the field down there in New Orleans game, I'm thinking, oh no, because he couldn't put any weight on that on that that foot, that leg. Well, the calf has multiple muscles in it. Uh, the one that you hope to avoid having an issue with is the biggest calf muscle, and that seems to be the one that is a, a little bit of a problem for Josh. So. How many weeks will he miss? That's uh, to be determined, but they're taking pictures, further evaluation, all that sort of thing about Josh Tupo's calf. So now you're down two guys that are mammoth guys in the middle of the defensive line, absorbing blockers, keeping blockers off of linebackers, and really being big factors in the running game. Jay Tufele played a ton more snaps. They picked him up after final cutdown off the waiver wire. He played well. Tufele uh, did a good job in there. Zach Carter, the rookie third-round pick from Florida, he significantly increased his snaps as well. On the practice squad, you have a couple of defensive tackles, Tyler Shelvin, Dominique Davis. Uh, will they bring one of those up, activate one of those guys uh, for, for game day, you'd think, potentially? And they're also scouring the other team's practice squads who's on there from a defensive lineman standpoint that they can take off their practice, uh, off that team's practice squad. They have to put them on the, on the, uh, the roster, not on the practice squad roster, but the regular roster. You can't go from practice squad to practice squad. You have to be on that 53 man roster. So, you know, they're looking at that. They're looking at everything they possibly can in terms of trying to hold the fort until two and reader are available. Uh, Jonah Williams. How about the, the game that he played with that dislocated kneecap? Dislocates the patella, and it went back in on its own, so it didn't do any damage um, or very minimal damage to the ligaments and soft tissue and bone. When your kneecap dislocates, the patella dislocates, you know, there's tibia, fibula, uh, there's femur, there's all kinds of bones in there. So you don't want it rattling around and doing some uh, chipping away at those bones. And you don't want it uh, getting in there and getting after ligaments and tendons and things of that nature. Um, so fortunately for Jonah, it didn't do any real bad damage to that. It's going to do some damage. I mean, there's some um, there's some natural damage that's done when when uh, the patella dislocates and then pops back into place. And boy, he it, he had some initial swelling. There's no question about it after he first did it uh, two weeks ago. And then Tuesday it was a real tough day. He was working five hours a day in the rehab uh, uh, area with, with uh, the Bengals medical people to make sure that he was able and ready to get back and play. And he uh, sacrificed. There's no doubt. He, he made some sacrifices. That's hard. People say, ah, oh, yeah, that's pretty, yeah, it's great. You don't practice. You'd rather practice than be in the, in rehab for five hours a day in, in hot tubs, in whirlpools, in um, ice treatment, stimulation, uh, all kinds of different things you have to do and it's monotonous and it's, it's, uh, it's boring. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not fun. It can be painful too, obviously, but he made those sacrifices and 
and he was able to play. And he played darn well against the Saints. Taped it up, braced it up, went out there and operated at a high level. So you got to figure Jonah Williams will be able to uh, uh, get things done in this football game against the Atlanta Falcons as well. If in fact he's uh, he's unable to go, you have a you know a couple of uh, offensive linemen that uh, that the Bengals have deactivated. Uh, De- De- Deontay Smith would be one that you might think about bringing up uh, to the active roster potentially, and Akeem Adeniji has been activated um, for the entire season. So those are our possibilities, but I, I don't think there's going to be any issue with Jonah Williams being able to to go and go 100% against the Atlanta Falcons. The other uh, dislocated knee is stunning. Jeffrey Gunter dislocated his kneecap. Now, kneecap dislocations, patella dislocations, that's a rare injury. You don't see that very often. The Bengals had two different players that it happened to in two weeks. I mean, you know, people say injuries are contagious. And, you know, if you're superstitious, you start to feel that way. I'm telling you, man, for Jonah Williams to dislocate his kneecap. And then the following week, in pregame warm-ups, Jeffrey Gunter dislocates his kneecap. So he's doing a drill where, you know, it's just warm-ups for the game, come off the ball half speed, player came off the ball a little harder than he anticipated, he braced for it, and basically dislocates his kneecap. Now, his didn't do any bone damage, but his did a little bit more ligament damage than Jonah Williams did. So I'm not sure. He didn't come back and play in that football game like Jonah Williams. Jonah, you know, missed six plays, came back and played in the second half. Jeffrey Gunter wasn't able to do that because there was a little bit more extensive damage. His kneecap stayed dislocated. It didn't dislocate and come back in on its own. It dislocated. Trainer had to put it back into place. Therefore, when it dislocates and stays there, it's now you got some issues with the ligaments and all that that it got tangled up in. So there's a little bit more to the process with uh, with Jeffrey Gunter, Joseph Osai, Cam Sample. Uh, those guys are going to have to step up in his stead uh, if, in fact, he's not able to uh, to go. But how about these defensive line injuries? I mean, it's crazy. And then at the next level, Logan Wilson goes down against the Saints and isn't able to play in the fourth quarter. He had that labrum injury to his right shoulder and had surgery in the offseason to correct it, and he re-injured it. The surgically repaired shoulder is the one that was re-injured. To what extent? Uh, that's still um, being hashed out. Now, will he be able to play this week with a, a harness? I don't know too early to tell. Will he have to miss a week or two and then play with a harness? Don't know. And have to wait and see. But bottom line is very, very significant day in, in, in terms of injury. Jeffrey Gunter goes down in pregame warmups and they can't even bring a guy up on the roster to take his place. You set your roster, they're out there warming up for the game and you lose a guy to a kneecap dislocation and warmups. So you're, you're, you're a man short. You're a man down anyway. It's crazy. Logan Wilson, hopefully he's not down for an extended period of time. Keem Davis Gaither, Marcus Bailey, and Clay Johnston, you know, got to pick up the slack a little bit. As the old saying goes, if everybody does a little, nobody has to do a lot. And this is where you find out the depth of your roster and your football team. How good a job did the organization do in not only determining starters and, and, uh, bringing st- players in to be starting caliber players for their football team. What about the depth? What about the back end of your roster? Not the first 22. What about the last, the last uh, 15 people in your roster? Can they play if, in fact, there are injuries? We'll find out about some of these guys, and that's life in the National Football League. The Bengals aren't the only team that are looking at injuries as they prepare for Game 7 of a 17-game st- schedule in the National Football League. It's hard to go 17 games without getting nicked up. There's no doubt about it. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knock. 
Ding!